Hello YouTube! Welcome to episode 6 of my Digital Aquarium Controller Series. Today we're going to build the water level sensors and solenoid valve assemblies for topping off the tanks. To detect the water level, I'll use these cheap little float switches. They have a small magnet in the float and a reed switch in the body. If placed with the wires up, the switch is closed or on when the float is down, and off when it rises up. If we secure this in place at the sump, we can tell when the water is above or below the middle of the switch. The main work here is the mounting bracket. I have two tanks to monitor, so I need two brackets. I have already completed the one shown here. This is the bracket for the reef sump. It is all acrylic and plastic, so it won't rust or pollute the tank, and has a wide clip to allow it to fasten over and onto the side of the 30 gallon tank I use for a sump. And now we'll build the second one. I already started with some of the pre-work. The 8th inch acrylic sheet or plexiglass was purchased at the local orange hardware store. I cut two long rectangles and two short ones of the same width, and then I use acrylic cement to sandwich the two short ones between the long ones at the top. This makes the main body that'll slide over the side of the 8th inch acrylic sump. Then I cut a smaller rectangle, and I use a heat gun to melt and bend it into a 45 degree angle. Now I drill a 5 16 inch hole in the angle bracket to mount the sensor to the bracket, test the fit, and then drill two 3 16 inch holes on the other side of the bracket so that I can bolt it to the main body. Now I use the existing hole as a guide and drill matching holes in several places up the main body. This will give a few different depths that I can set the sensor to. Finally, I drill a larger hole up in the top to feed the wires through. Now remove the plastic film and assemble the fixture. First, mount the sensor in the bracket. Feed the locking nut down the wires and tighten it in place. Then use a pair of plastic machine bolts to attach the bracket to the main body, and secure them with plastic nuts. Finally, feed the wires up through the hole in the top, and the sensor is ready to be wired in. When the water level drops due to evaporation, I need to add fresh water back to the tank. To do this, I'll use the Adreno to activate relays that'll then power these 12 volt solenoid valves. The valves are normally closed, so when the power is off, water will not flow. This way, I can meter out how much I add each day and set a maximum. I want to mount these to the back of the stand, so I use a piece of quarter inch plywood to make a mounting base. The layout's not essential, but I want it to look nice. I'll make this bracket about six inches wide. I make marks to place the valves in the center with an inch between them. The hollow feet of each valve are made to accept a screw for mounting, and they form a one inch square. So mark that on the board and drill holes for the screws. Test the placement. It looks good. Let's get cutting. Off camera, I trim the board to length on the table saw. Now I use an eighth inch bit to drill the mounting holes for the valves and for the bracket itself. Later, I add a few more holes for the cable ties to secure the wiring to the mount. Again, I test fit, this time with screws. This works, I just need a bit of sanding and some paint. Cat5 cable has enough wires for both float switches and valves, so to make the cabling easier, I'll terminate it at the bracket and make a connection point for the extension wires for the float switches. So I need to solder up some pin headers. First, I measure and cut a small piece of strip board. Score it deep with a knife on both sides and then you can snap it at the line. Now I cut a length of Cat5 to connect the controller to these devices. I cut back about 8 inches of sheathing, separate the wires, and strip the insulation off the ends. Each of the four pairs will go to a different device. I use a bit of blue tack. <laughs> mine's white. 
to stick the pin headers in place and to solder them up. Then I solder a pair of wires to each pin header. The orange pair will be for the reef sump float sensor, FS1, and the blue for FS2. These are just switches, so the polarity doesn't matter. Now, for insulation, I take two small sections of wide heat shrink tubing and cut notches in it for the pin headers. Then I slide it in place and shrink it down with a heat gun. This is okay, but I'll probably paint on a bit of liquid electrical tape also. The valves come with blade style plugs, so the brown and green pairs of wires need to have fittings to attach them in a way that allows me to remove them and replace the valve if needed. Fortunately, these connectors are pretty common. I picked up a few at the auto parts store. I double the wire over to give it a bit more bulk and crimp the connectors with a pair of large pliers. Then I attach them to the valves. Now I need to solder some extension wires to the float switches. I removed the sheathing from about four feet of Cat5 and separated out the four pairs of wires. FS2 needs the longest extension, so I used the blue pair for it. I use a shorter pair of the orange for FS1. Thread some heat shrink tubing over the wires for later and then solder them all up. Remember to add the heat shrink first. It's much more difficult to get it in place after the soldering is done. With these extensions in place, I'll add a two pin female connector to the end of each, as shown back in episode three. And these float switches are ready for action. Now that the soldering is done and the paint is dry, it's time for us to mount it all up. Screw the valves to the board. Then adjust the wires so everything fits well and won't get snagged. I use a zip tie to attach the pin header to the right side of the board and another to secure the cap 5 at the left. To supply the water, I'll be using quarter inch outer diameter polyethylene tubing from my RO system and push in fittings. I'll use a T adapter to feed both of these valves from one line, so I need to cut some small sections and connect the valves to the T. The line cuts easy with snips, just take care to have a clean edge and do not mar the outside. Then push it into the fitting and apply the little clip to hold it secure. Now to test. I wire it to a breadboard and 12 volt power. You could use it like this without a controller. Each float is in series with one of the valves. Power, switch, valve, then ground. So when the switch is on, the valve is open. Off, it's closed. With the switches in the air like this, it's behaving as if the water was low. And the water turns on that way. To simulate higher water, I lift the float and the water shuts off. Working as expected. The last step, having successfully tested on the breadboard, was to add Molex connectors to the end of the cable and label everything. This is ready to go now. I hope you found this useful. If you like this, please click like and subscribe to see more, and until next time, thanks for watching.